Welcome to the sixth lecture of the course Reinforcement Learning at Paderborn University. My name is Oliver Walschert and today we are going to investigate on so-called n-step bootstrapping methods. So what is it? It can pretty much be summarized here with that diagram depicting the different width and depth situations of uh, learning in reinforcement learning contexts. And especially today, we will deal with different options in terms of the depth of the reinforcement learning update. So we have started when we uh, operated with uh, model-free reinforcement learning with Monte Carlo uh, prediction and control, which was basically taking into account sampled transitions from some starting state until the termination of an episode. So here we took into account full length updates and on the contrary last week we have discussed a very short cutted version of uh, these updates rule sample based updates rule which we have called temporal difference learning where we only took into account one sample based transition and after that transition on the successor state we then used a bootstrap a bootstrapped estimate in order to define an TD update target. And today we are going to discuss intermediate solutions in between these two, let's call it extreme options of uh, defining learning targets, where we take into account n sampled steps. And therefore we call these methods n step reinforcement learning methods. The table of contents of our today's lectures also yeah, more or less uh, based on all these different n-step application scenarios we will again start with the prediction case where we uh, modify our temporal difference prediction to the n-step variant then for control we will have a look at Zaza and then we are going to uh, investigate on off-policy learning alternatives first with the already known importance sampling in an n-step version and then we are going to uh, talk about so-called tree backup approach which is also the same application context as important sampling so off policy learning but here we are trying to omit the importance sampling transformation and therefore trying to uh, make the approach a little bit more straightforward and then we will at the end of today's lecture take into account the so-called n-step q sigma learning approach which is an unifying approach trying to bringing all uh, things together which we have learned um, of the today's lecture and uh, is a very flexible approach in terms of n-step uh, on and off policy learning method so let's first compare the different uh, bootstrapping ideas, update ideas and model free reinforcement learning on a bird's eye perspective. So here on this diagram 6.2 we have the two extreme options we already mentioned in the second slide uh, which is the uh, TD0 or one step TD where we only have uh, one sample transition and then bootstrap uh, on the successor state and we have yeah, infinity step TD which we normally call Monte Carlo, where we take into account the simple transitions until the termination of the episode. And now with n-step uh, temporal difference method, we take into account uh, up to n sampled reward transitions. So here in the case of two-step uh, TD, we have these two transitions. We get sampled rewards from these two transitions, and then we start bootstrapping an estimate on this uh, state which is two steps later. A direct consequence of course of uh, n-step bootstrapping is that this estimate for our uh, starting state where we want to update our state value or action value estimate is only available after an n-step delay, right? So here for uh, one step TD we have to wait until we have reached the successor state and then we can update but for example for two step TD we have to wait two time steps and then we are able to update our state value estimate. 
So this is say, yeah, have to be taken into account and can be considered also a drawback of end step methods because we get an an additional update delay, which may slows down the learning. And um, as already mentioned on the first slide, just to stress that again, TD0, so the classical temporal difference learning approach and Monte Carlo updates are then the special cases of end step prediction methods as the yeah, two extreme cases. And next we want to uh, write down a formal notation on an arbitrary end step uh, TD type update and therefore we start with a little bit of a recap of the update targets uh, for our uh, incremental update rule and the update targets. So here G um, we are now defining with that lower index here. So we have a starting state or starting time step, which we note here by K. And then after that colon, we get the uh, capital T, which denotes then the time step until we want to use sampled returns. So in the case here of Monte Carlo, uh, of course, we end then at capital T because we are taking into account the in entire return series until the episode is terminated. So equation 6.1 therefore is just the well-known uh, discounted return series for a Monte Carlo prediction. On the other hand, TD0, classical TD, just using the one-step bootstrap return. So here we start again, of course, at the same arbitrary sampling step K and we just yeah, look one step back or into the future depending on our viewpoint so we have to wait one step and then we can use our estimated bootstrap um, state value estimate at the successor state xk plus one in order to define a td update rule and if we plug this together and also allow for any intermediate uh, end step state value prediction target which is denoted here, so we are looking end step uh, into the future, then we get these end step sampled returns with the appropriate discounting and then at the successor state k plus n we plug in our bootstrap estimate of that successor state. So we therefore truncate our full return series after n steps and of course there might be the situation if I'm having an episodic task that this prediction k plus n is larger than t or equal or larger than capital T so our termination of an episode already happened and therefore our look ahead uh, horizon uh, cannot be covered fully and in this case we are just assuming or we're just considering that all sampled uh, returns which would lie after the termination of the episode are set to zero and we only really use these uh, re rewards which are uh, occurring before the termination of an episode is occurring. And then with that yeah, end step state value prediction target G, we can just plug it in directly in our temporal difference learning formulation and in, in its incremental form. So we get here that our updated uh, state value estimate is equal to the previous state value estimate plus that update um, difference here between the update target and the previous state value estimate multiplied with the step size alpha. Here again with these lower index k plus n or k plus n minus 1 we depict the time delay you know, which we will have to wait until we really can make this update right. So if we want to update for the state uh, which we visited at xk, then we have to wait until the time step k plus n, uh, since only then we will have this n step truncated return series in order to estimate, uh, in order to update these uh, specific state. Yeah, so pretty much this is already mentioned here. Delay of n steps because we can update the according uh, state value estimate 
and of course at the end so if you're operating in an uh, episodic task frame then at the end of that episode we have to incorporate some additional auxiliary update steps which are not really part of the environment but just artificial update steps in order to get also the uh, end step targets for uh, the states uh, which are be between our delay k plus n and the termination of the episode so therefore we have just to finish with our, our algorithm and we can do that we will also see that later in the algorithmic implementation just by adding additional update steps which are not part of the environment but of our uh, td update rule and very important property of these end step updates is the so-called error reduction property which is summarized here in equation 6.5 and this error reduction property basically states that the worst case estimation error of the expected return series uh, compared to the true state value is always smaller or equal to the appropriately discounted um, error of the bootstrapped estimate variant so we can use that error property, a reduction property, then together with the theorem regarding an appropriate step size control. So that was the correct tuning of alpha over the number of time steps to also show that all n step updates um, will lead to the true state value. And therefore our uh, n step TD based prediction is bias free if we idealize to assume an infinite number of steps or episodes so basically what we have shown for td0 so for classical td as well as for monte carlo that these two methods can converge to the true value is also applying to all intermediate and in step solutions however of course in practice we don't have an infinite number of steps or episodes so in a more practical sense uh, choosing the number of n steps uh, which we want to take into account for our td based update uh, is a degree of freedom we can choose it freely in our uh, given application and um, we will also see an example later that uh, this is uh, sometimes more art than science so there is no no really a predefined way how to choose n in an optimal way and uh, often <clears throat> we just have to put it to the test empirically and try to get a yeah, good estimate for n itself a good feeling for n itself in order to um yeah balance out this trade-off of learning speed because i've said with uh, increasing number of n steps we will also add some delay to our learning problem uh, but on the other side of course with an increasing number of uh, end steps we are also uh, reducing the variance of our problem so there is a certain trade-off and it's highly application to dependent uh, which uh, n should be chosen yeah let's go through the algorithmic implementation of end step td prediction of course we have to input a policy pi which is going to be evaluated for the prediction problem we have two parameters in the implementation the one is the step size alpha which in a simple case can be assumed to be static or in a more intelligent way we can also tune it dynamically accordingly to our discussion from the last lecture number five and of course we have the number of prediction steps n uh, as a positive integer which we have to choose beforehand we're going to initialize our state value estimates in the usual way and then we spend one or more episodes in our problem uh, depending if it's episodic or continuing task we will start from some initial state x0 we will set our uh, termination uh, to infinity we will uh, always monitor if a um, new state is terminal and therefore update capital t also through the rest of the algorithm but but for the initial setting we set it to infinity just in case we have a continuing problem then we run the number of steps k and we observe if k is a non-terminal step if yes then we take a new action following policy pi we observe the successor state xk plus y 
and the return we retrieve and we monitor if that new state xk plus one is now terminal. So if it's terminal, then we update our capital T to k plus one such that we know, okay, that this time step k plus one is now the terminal one and we can then finish our algorithm by applying all end step updates, which we have to follow until yeah, all the uh, state estimates are updated until that termination step. To do that, we introduce the time index or auxiliary time index tau, which we set to k minus n plus one. So time will be here the time index of a specific state update. And of course we have to first check if tau is greater or equal than zero. So um, if we have, let's say for example, a five step TD update rule, then we have to really wait for five steps such that uh, a new update target can be already processed. And this check here, if tau is greater or equal to zero, is then just basically checking if that new update target uh, is already available and if the uh, appropriate delay uh, was already covered. Then what's happening here, uh, the first line after this check is basically we sum together all discounted rewards until that nth step. And if tau plus n is smaller than capital T, so if yeah, if in this look ahead interval the termination is not yet terminated, then we also add the discounted and bootstrap estimate of that successor state to our update target G. So of course if tau plus n would be equal to T or even a greater then that would mean that in our look ahead interval uh, starting from our current time step k we would terminate the episode and therefore of course we cannot bring in any uh, bootstrapped estimate here because the yeah episode has already terminated so these uh, therefore this yeah, addition this additional term to g is uh, in a separate line in order to evaluate if a specific episode has already terminated or not. And then in, especially in the Monte Carlo case this uh, would of course be always not available or not used because in the Monte Carlo case uh, as a special case of end step TD prediction we only take into account the full and discounted reward series of an episode. And then when we have formulated the uh, appropriate end step td update quantity g then we can just plug it in our incremental uh, update rule here for our state uh, which is then x tau so for the tau time step according to that uh, formulation here and then we just perform that update and we do that until tau is uh, t minus one so just before we terminate our episode. So of course if it's as I said a continuing problem that loop here could theoretically run to an infinite number of time steps. We can provide you a little example for end step TD prediction and therefore we are using the um, yeah state random walk which we already used also in one of the previous lectures. Uh, but now with an extended number of states, uh, in total we have 19 states, we start at the state J and then there are up to nine states to the left and nine states to the right. Uh, each state transition uh, from one state to another is a 50-50 chance and we don't get any a reward for these transitions, so this is a Markov reward process here, and we don't get any transition reward except from A to termination we get minus one and from the 19th state S to termination we get then a positive reward of plus one and the task of course is now to evaluate on the state values of the different states for an undiscounted problem. And this is shown here in this graph basically and what we see on the y-axis is the average root mean squared error over all 19 states after 10 episodes of learning. So this is more or less what we can call an early stage performance because there were only 10 episodes to learn. So of mm -hmm. course the picture may change if 
more episodes are taken into account for the learning. And we also see here like the average performance because 100 independent runs of that problem for always 10 episodes have been averaged. And what we can see here from these different graphs are the uh, nstep td performance for different number of n steps. So n equals 1 would be the classical td case and here for n up to 512 steps. So this would be something which is very close and or very likely to be close to the Monte Carlo case. Uh, if we take into account that there are all, only 19 states. Of course, yeah, the states transition are somehow random, but yeah, with a very like uh with a very large likelihood after 512 steps, I believe that in most times that uh, process here will be uh, will have been terminated. And from this specific example, we can see that there is a yeah, optimum in terms of choosing n and alpha. So the two parameters of our uh, optimization uh, of our prediction problem here and in this specific case we can observe that n equals 4 with a step size so this was a simple step size implementation here with a constant step size over all steps uh, was roughly 0.4 so these two combinations here or these two parameters combined led to the lowest uh, average ms error over all 19 states. However, this is just an example. Of course, depending on your specific application, these two quantities have to be chosen differently, especially depending on the number of states which have to be evaluated, depending on the number of episodes or the total number of transition steps which have to be taken into account. So uh, we cannot generalize these results here that taking n equals 4 and alpha uh, equals 0.4 is always the best choice. This is just a valid here for that very, very specific problem. And of course also, which is also, uh, which should be stressed out again. So here in that example, Barton Sutton worked with alpha equals 0.4 as a constant learning rate. But as we have discussed last week already, that uh, this is maybe not the best idea and the rule of the thumb was to start with a rather large uh, alpha in order to speed up the learning in the early stage and then when we slowly uh, when we converge to the let's say steady state estimation then it's worth to reduce alpha to smaller values we have also shown uh, that there are some uh, specific transition rules for alpha which uh, will guarantee us uh, that uh, this estimate is uh, converging to the true limit, uh, to the true value, and uh, so we should take that also into account in real-world applications. In the next section, we are then going to transfer these ideas of n-step updates from the prediction to the control case, in particular to the SADA algorithm. And here for a smooth transition to that new topic of uh, n-step control, I have just repeated the SASA0, so the one-step uh, SASA update rule, as we have learned it in the last lecture in its incremental form. So basically, um, two, um, yeah, one, one and a half things changing here compared to the TD prediction. The basic change is, of course, that we are now estimating not state values anymore but action values so therefore we are estimating q or q hat and therefore we are sampling specific state action transitions and in the sasa case our one step update here is based on yeah one specific sampled reward and then we are using our bootstrapped estimate on q hat uh, regarding the successor state and an successor action. And now when we want to transfer the SASA0 algorithm to an n-step variant, basically what we change, uh, what we are changing is just again our target. And we can do that directly in the same way as we did it for the state values in the prediction case. So in the state action value case, basically we have the same update rule for the target 
from any time step k until n steps into the future, we sample and discount n specific rewards and then use our discounted state action uh, estimate, bootstrap estimate at the successor state at xk plus one, uh, plus n, as well as um, the corresponding action of this successor state. So basically everything keeps the same. And again, if that look ahead interval up to n steps into the future should be uh, behind the termination of an episode. So in case we're operating in an episodic task, then of course, uh, in these cases that update the target here would be then equal to the Monte Carlo update because we are just sampling all the specific you know, rewards until that uh, termination of the episode. Then in Sasa, as you may remember, we also had the opportunity to operate with the expected Sasa update where we not uh, sample specific transitions or as a bootstrapped estimate. We, we put in the expected Q value on being in a specific state, applying the actions under policy pi. And we can also apply the expected Sasa update in an n steps form. And the only thing which changes compared to the previous n step update for the yeah, classical Sasa without expectation is that we still use up to n sampled uh, rewards and then we put in here our expected expro approximated action value and not the direct bootstrap estimate. So this is the only difference. And with these updates we have now defined, so updates G, we can directly plug it in to the uh, update rule, a learning rule of Zaza now in its n step form. So basically the same formula as we uh, have known from the incremental implementation also from last lecture. And here now this update G at this uh, place can be either the classical Zaza where we use the bootstrapped estimate here at the, uh, at the last term or the expected approximate value uh, if uh, we are using expected Zaza. We can compare then these different state action value estimates form again in the different backup diagrams. So last week we have considered the one step Zaza update. So we're specifically, specifically taking into account only one transition. That week before with Monte Carlo in the episodic case, uh, which we could also call infinite step Zaza, we take into call uh, we take into account all the transitions until the termination of an episode. Now, as discussed also in the TD case, we can also into account any intermediate number of steps. And as a special case, again, we can also yeah plug in the expected Zaza update if we like to. The algorithmic implementation of n-step Zaza is uh, pretty much the same uh, as in the uh, n-step TD case with minor differences I want to highlight. Of course, one difference is now that um, yeah, the action values are estimated and not the state values anymore, but we have discussed that already. And of course, we don't uh, necessarily plug in a fixed policy now. We could plug in a fixed policy if we want to use other to uh, predict the action values of that policy. But yeah, most likely we will use the other algorithm in order to estimate on the optimal action values and therefore to do a Zaza in a control context. And normally we will then use, for example, Epsilon Greedy uh, in order to define a policy which is Epsilon Greedy on our initial estimates queue and will be then also uh, Epsilon Greedy over all uh, updates of queue hat. The differences uh, compared to uh, Zaza are then, uh, the differences of Zaza compared to DD is basically then just this last line that when we have fulfilled our update on the estimated action values here in this previous step that we then are going to update our uh, policy pi 
by being for example epsilon greedy with respect to the estimates q hat so this is basically a new line which we don't need in the td case but if we want to use a zara in a control context then we have to make the uh, policy improvement step which would be this line here and the rest is exactly the same as in the td case uh, however, the only thing I would like also to mention is that in uh, this uh, n step Zaza, which is depicted here, that here we are using the, let's say, classical formulation with the uh, bootstrapped estimate at the nth step. Uh, as we have mentioned before, we could also use the expected Zaza update. And of course, then this uh, part here, this term of the target formulation would have to be changed to its expected update. So with this slide, I would like to highlight some major difference in terms of the classic one-step Zaza to its multiple-step variant. And the example is here Grid World, where we start with learning an optimal trajectory from some arbitrary starting state to a goal state. And what we can see here is a specific taken path uh, in an uh, yeah, early stage a learning process so all uh, initial state action values are set to an arbitrary value and in this case if we do a one step sasa update of course all the bootstrapped updates along this way are more or less useless because yeah <clears throat> they just bootstrap on some initial guesses which are not really useful to be bootstrapped from and the only uh, yeah, true value update which is useful here for that uh, the other update would be then um, in the one step case this pre goal state action update in the multiple step case uh, here in particular the 10 step case also the other nine state action values would be updated and therefore we would get additional information within one episode in order to learn more from that episode so that is then very likely to speed up the uh, overall learning process especially here in an episodic task like grid world however of course as we have already discussed in the td case there's a trade-off between the learning delay because these updates here of course are only available with a 10 step uh, delay in this case uh, and therefore yeah there is a trade-off in terms of how much i can sample how much i can uh, really learn from uh, one multi-step uh, update sweep compared to a uh, one-step zaza where these delays especially if the state action plane uh, is already filled with more inform informative values compared to some arbitrary uh, initial baseline so what is quicker that cannot be really stated then it just has to be put to the test so as we already mentioned in the previous section on temporal difference uh, and step implementation here the number of updates so n as well as also the learning rate alpha these are parameters which have to be hand tuned or optimized uh, for a specific application and there are no predefined optimums so with TD prediction and Zaza, we have now learned two on policy approaches for prediction and control. But as we have already discussed in the last lecture, that off policy learning may have some improvements, some advantages in terms of that exploitation exploration dilemma. We, of course, also want to incorporate end step off policy learning algorithms, and we will start with a transformation of the well-known important sampling so important sampling just a little recap here so what was it we first need of course a behavior policy b which is used to explore inside the action and state space to generate experience and the target policy pi that is then that policy that will learn from that experience to become eventually the optimal policy in the long run an important requirement here was that we need coverage between the two. So in particular, uh, all actions that might be taken under our target policy pi must be at least occasionally taken under our behavior policy B. And therefore, we can state so that every um, 
probability taking an action u being in a state x where that is greater than 0 for pi that has to be also the case for b and of there very often an arbitrary definition of the um, behavior policy can be then that this is just an epsilon soft policy and from uh, lecture 4 for example we have learned that important sampling can be used in order to transform the samples in terms of uh, state values and action values which we have obtained from a behavior policy to our target policy that this transformation that mapping can be done through the important sampling ratio rho and this definition here 6.12 is just a direct recap from lecture 4 so basically what we do is we transform the uh, to uh, the uh, sampled state values or the estimated state values just by the uh, yeah, relative let's say likelihood of doing some certain uh, moves under policy pi compared to policy b and now it's very straightforward just to use that uh, sampling ratio important sampling ratio to apply that for an end step of policy td style update and the only thing which we're really doing is we, we take the exact same update rule, incremental update rule, as we have seen with the classic uh, end step to the update. But now we transform this uh, error here that, yeah, let's say, estimation error between our uh, previous estimation on the state value of state xk and our uh, end step of policy target g with that important sampling ratio, oh, which is defined as from the previous slide. However, of course, we have to take into account that um, yeah, here these if we are operating in an episodic case, that might terminate, and therefore we have to take care about the sampling indexes, the time index, uh, such that it is limited to a feasible interval. Same. For the Zaza case, where we want to um, estimate on the uh, Q values, on the action values, so same here, we are plugging in again the important sampling ratio uh, with respect to the um, yeah, estimation error update here. However, the only thing which has to be taken into account that for the action value case, that the start at the end of this of these transitions which are taken into account are delayed or shifted by one step compared to the temporal difference case because here we are taking into account state action pairs and therefore we have to yeah wait one step into the future such that uh, uk plus one is available regarding the implementation the off policy and step td uh, algorithm is more or less the same as in the on policy case we just have to take into account two additions uh, in terms of the importance sampling ratio rho so of course first we have to calculate that important sampling ratio and then we just have to plug it in into the incremental update rule and in the SASA case where we want to uh, work with the action uh, values it is uh, more or less the same so we are calculating row and plugging it in into the update rule. Yeah, and in the next section we want to have a look at an alternative for of policy learning which is called uh, tree backup based learning and the motivation to have a look at that is basically that the important sampling might be rather tedious. We have already seen that in the lecture number four that there might be also high variance coming with uh, important sampling due to that scaling by the importance sampling ratio and therefore we might consider alternatives and for the one step update case we already have these alternatives discussed so q learning or also expected zaza uh, were the classical one step uh, off policy learning approaches um, which doesn't need an uh, importance sampling mapping so that worked well and now the idea is to especially use the expected Zaza update which we um, have seen in the end step uh, expected Zaza case where we only took into account the expectation at the uh, final nth step 
um, now also in a more general way uh, as it is already depicted here in figure 6.7 um, to uh, work with the expectation uh, of transitions along the way of sampled uh, state action transitions and we will call that an end step uh, tree backup and yeah so the general idea is here to mix end step sampling so that's what i meant we will sample through this yeah, middle pass here of that uh, backup diagram and to use bootstrapping um, of yeah expectation updates along the way of these dangling nodes which are hanging off the sides and basically we will uh, yeah, mix these two in order to find uh, yeah, an off-policy learning method which comes without important sampling. So um, the basic idea of important sampling can be summarized as follows. So the updates uh, of the estimated action values uh, come uh, from the leaf nodes and the actions which we uh, already take, so the specific transitions which we have uh, sampled these will be weights for the subsequent um, nodes proportional to the probability of occurring under policy pi so these transitions the specific transitions we have sampled become weights and the estimate action values coming from these leaf nodes so the first level actions um, contributing to the value estimate would be then estimate uh, would be then weighted with the probability of being in a specific uh, state x k plus one and uh, having yeah, executed a specific action u. Second level actions then would contribute to the value estimate by that yeah multiplication of the two weights. So being in state x k plus one and then having fulfilled an action uk plus one and then uh, accordingly in that state xk plus one uh, xk plus two and so on so basically we will see that subsequent state action pairs uh, expected state action pairs will be weighted with that uh, multiplication of the action pair probabilities so if we try to derive a formal equation to that based on this yeah working principle we of course can first start with the one step tree backup target which is basically just the expected zaza update we have one sampled uh, return and then get the expected update of the actual values in the two step case um, basically we start here at this step with the same um yeah part of the target which is also part of the expected Zaza. so this is uh, pretty much the same and then for the subsequent node so for the next uh, state action transition we will then await this parenthesis here with the probability of being in state xk plus one and performing certain action uk plus one uh, we sample the specific uh, reward and the expectation then of the according action value and this parenthesis here if we have a look at the definition of that uh, tree backup style target is basically in a recursive form again g but now shifted by one time step so that's basically shown here so here this parenthesis is basically the action value target shifted at one time step so if we shift that plus one or minus one then we will exactly get the first term here so that's a nice thing in the tree backup equation that we can directly already here for that two-step procedure find a recursive uh, equation in order to combine the updates of subsequent return targets and if we generalize that to an end step tree backup then we basically get this formula 617 which is more or less the same formula as we have seen uh, before but now in a uh, generalized form for up to n steps
Since it's recursive, normally we start the uh, calculation here from the bottom node and then move up to the uh, initial node of a specific um, transition directory and the yeah, state action value update which we uh, then uh, obtain from this specific target here is then just a classical end step SASA rule. So when we have obtained that tree backup uh, end step return here we can just plug it in to the normal SASA update rule and uh, we are good to go. The end step tree backup algorithm um, as depicted here is an also pretty similar to the uh, normal um, yeah, expected Zaza update or end step Zaza update. There are major, there are two major differences. The first major difference is here that our uh, subsequent action UK plus one is sampled from arbitrary mapping from a behavior policy, uh, which comes yeah, just from the off policy framework, which we don't need in the classical Zaza because that's on policy. And then these uh, updates here uh, with the different weights according to the main path of our uh, backup tree backup diagram are uh, of course a direct consequence of that recursive uh, tree backup target definition from the previous slide. So these two here are the major differences for the end step tree backup uh, of policy of course and a little bit different uh, calculation of the um, update target but in general quite similar to normal end step Zaza. And now we can also try to even generalize that tree backup approach a little bit more with the so-called end step Q sigma approach. And the end step Q sigma approach can be uh, well compared against the other approaches we have discussed today here with that backup diagram uh, diagram overview so for n step zaza or for in this example we we are referring to four step situations in the four step zaza situation we are just sampling four specific transi uh, transitions have our target and can do our action value update here this uh, parameter rho is also indicating transitions uh, where we would need import sampling in the off policy case. So we could use, of course, uh, off policy in the, uh, we could use a four steps other in the on policy case without any important sampling, yes. But if, uh, as discussed, we would like to uh, plug it into an off policy learning case, then these rows would indicate that these transitions have to be mapped by the importance sampling ratio. The four step expected in another case, more or less the same, except that the last um, transition that for that last uh, step here, we don't take into account the direct uh, bootstrap estimate, but the expected value of it. The four step tree backup, more or less the generalization of that four step expected Zaza now with all transitions, including the expectations and what is now the generalization if we take into account these yeah, three variants here, which we have already discussed. So this box here is already known. Basically the generalization here for uh, Q Sigma is that we can choose for each transition if we want to use the expectation as part of the update rule, or if we want to uh, have the specific sampling uh, of a specific transition. And we can do that um, choice or we can depict that choice here by that factor sigma. If sigma is zero, then a transition is done using the expectation. And if sigma is equals one, then the transition is covered by a sampling update. And yeah, Q sigma as depicted here in this backup diagram overview yeah, is a general update rule depending on the definition of sigma on the different steps. We could either form a classical Zaza, we could form expected Zaza or even three backup as special cases. And uh, as we will discuss also on the next slide, we could even 
blend these different update rules in a linear fashion. Yeah, remarks on sigma. So in each time step k, we consider we can consider a continuous intermixing of sampling and expectation by sigma between zero and one. The extreme cases or special cases, which we have also saw, saw in the um, which we have also seen in the previous slide, were sigma equals zero. That was pure expectation, and equals one was full sampling. In general, uh, sigma can be set individually for each state, either manually or dynamically by superimposed optimization algorithm. So that means uh, for every step uh, inside our n-step algorithm, uh, sigma can be different. So we don't have to choose sigma fixed for all uh, steps inside our algorithm. We can either set it uh, by ourselves manually, hand-tuned, or of course sigma becomes an important hyperparameter together with uh, other hyperparameters like the um, uh, in step, so how many steps we should take, or or our learning rate alpha. So we have to choose that wisely. However, of course, that also increases the complexity of the algorithm, especially if we have so many sigmas to be tuned depending on the number of steps. So if there are n steps to be considered, we can tune up to n different sigmas and therefore the uh, hyperparameter space of that n step q sigma algorithm of course is increasing a lot. To define the formal q sigma target we will first rewrite the n step tree backup equation. So here this uh, first part here of the or not the first part but this equation here is basically just the recap repetition from the tree backup uh, formulation nothing uh, new here nothing changed and we just introduce um, a short notation v uh, overline which is then this uh, expectation of the action value being in a specific state xk for the time horizon h is equal k plus n so if we plug that in we can uh, rearrange that second part here of that uh, equation and find that the update rule for the uh, tree backup g k until h so h was exactly that k plus one is the specific um, reward r k plus one and then the again here the recursive definition of that uh, reward or of that target so similarly, we can also uh, formulate a recursive formulation of the off policy important sampling target, which is stated here in 6.19. So here we have now the importance sampling target. So this is for the yeah, off policy sampling case, whereas this uh, end step tree backup is of course for the expectation case. So here we have the yeah, expectation case covered and here with n step importance sampling which is also just mildly rewritten using that v overscore definition overline definition um, is also the same as we have discussed in one of the previous sections and now we have these two building blocks uh, we can use uh, sampling uh, or importance sampling also to cover off policy and we can use the expectation updates and now as we have discussed using uh, QSigma idea is to fuse these two update rules together by a linear weighting in terms of the probability pi and the important sampling ratio rho. So basically these three steps here, here we have rho times our, yeah, the rest of our update and here we have that probability our uh, target policy so this part here is then the same as you see also at this point so we can perfectly fuse that together by a linear mapping which is then shown here so basically sigma is then a linear mapping of the a part which comes by important sampling for the sample based transitions and here with one minus sigma linear weighting in terms of the expectation based update and with that 
n step q sigma target, we can then again use the classical uh, Zaza update rule in order to do our action value updates. Yeah, the n step q sigma implementation is a little bit lengthy, therefore, we had to split up the code on two slides. The uh, pre information on the code is written here. So we need a uh, behavior policy in the off learning case. We need some parameters like the learning rate, number of steps we want to consider for our update rule, uh, epsilon if we are operating an epsilon greedy way on the target policy, and our sigma values in order to yeah ensure or to, to select between sample based and expectation based updates. Yeah, we need also an initialization of our Q value again and the policy, uh, which is either fixed if we want to do off policy estimation or which should be epsilon greedy, for example, with respect to Q in the control case. The code itself uh, is summarized here. Um, I won't go through all the details at the moment. So basically what we have here in the first part uh, of policy choices together with the calculation of a row, so of our important sampling ratio, if it's if it's required, of course, if sigma is selected in such a way that uh, sigma is always indicating uh, expectation um, uh, updates, and we don't uh, need a row here because we are using the uh, expectations and therefore don't need importance sampling. And then the second part here down is basically this loop uh, over i. This is basically the recursive calculation of our targets g depending on the choice of sigma. So either a sampling based or expectation based could be anything in between or these two extreme scenarios and then we do the classical Q value uh, update in the incremental way as discussed so far. And if we use that algorithm here in control scenario, then again, of course, uh, we also have to provide the policy improvement step in terms of making uh, epsilon, uh, in terms of making the policy pie greedy with respect to Q hat. Here's also a final example on, yeah, Q Sigma learning with different configurations regarding the choice of Sigma for these uh, 19 state random walk, right? So we stay, uh, we started in the middle of a sem simple 19 state random walk example. And then uh, this was a Markov reward process. And here again on the left side is the RMS uh, average error on all state value, uh, action value estimates. And yeah, this example was done for constant n equals three and learning rate alpha equals four, and the uh, yeah results were averaged over hundred runs. So what we can see here is the performance for increasing number of episodes with the yeah, two let's say extreme cases. So Q zero of course would mean fully expectation based update. So this is basically the tree backup of policy learning case. Or we could also use um, Q equals uh, sigma equals one, which would be then the Dada case. And then these yeah let's say three different parameterizations in between. What we can see, which is more or less uh, ex has to be expected, so three backups, a full expectation based off policy learning is rather slow in the beginning, but uh, results in a nice accuracy in the long run, whereas the other, so zero step updates have a quick learning at the beginning and then are yeah having some steady state error after a given number of episodes. And this uh, gray line here, dynamic Q, this is like uh, the special case, which is fusing together these uh, two ideas here. So we start in a Zaza fashion. So we take uh, sigma equals one to foster quick learning. Therefore, as you can see here, the gray line is more or less, uh, is following the green line for the first maybe five or six episodes. And then we shift towards uh, three backups by this uh, dynamic 
Sigma update rule. So with every new episode, Sigma is reduced by 90 or is reduced to 95%. And therefore, in the long run, we can obtain a tree backup like accuracy. So this is the idea here to use that flexibility of Q Sigma algorithm in order to allow for quick learning at the beginning, following a Zaza idea, one step idea, and then allow for an accurate of policy estimation in the long run using the tree backups. However, of course, this example, uh, which is shown here from this article here, uh, of course, only exemplary. Uh, and application highly application dependent we cannot expect that in especially realistic situations these outcomes for q sigma are always the same and it is just giving us an intuition that this combination of quick learning and accuracy in the long run could be a good idea but it has to be uh, as discussed to be put into the test for every specific application so this is already pretty much uh, for today and I would like to summarize the major contents of our today's lectures. So first we have started with providing you intermediate solutions uh, in between Temporal Difference and Monte Carlo as a special cases for n step updates where n equals 1 would be the Temporal Difference a special case and n equals a full episodic sweep would be the Monte Carlo case. Here that parameter n, um, so the number of steps which are taken into account for sample-based updates, are uh, is a delicate degree of freedom. So it contains, of course, an, an trade-off between the learning delay. So as more steps I am allowing for that update rule, I will have an appropriate uh, time delay until I can provide that update to uh, my uh, estimate table. Uh, and on the contrary, of course, more steps, as we've seen, will also reduce the uncertainty regarding that uh, bootstrapped estimate. So there's a, a trade-off and choosing it wisely is a non-trivial solution. So it's a non-trivial task. So we don't know the perfect choice of N for a specific problem beforehand. And we have to just test it out or maybe also try to optimize it by specific hyperparameter hyper optimization tools. We have provided also n step of policy learning by important sampling. So also we have just used important sampling right away in an n step form. But as we have discussed also in the previous lecture said important sampling can be quite tricky in terms of high variance transformation by the important sampling ratio. So there are three backups uh, provided as an alternative for this case. And then Finally, Q Sigma um, is a unifying approach for sample based and expectation based approaches. We can intermix these two updates by the choice of uh, Sigma, which can be anything in between uh, fully sampling based or fully expectation based. However, of course, this gives us another trade-off, another flexibility, of course, but also um, this flexibility comes with additional complexity of the hyperparameter space of the given learning algorithms. And therefore, this choice of, of the optimal uh, sigma is, of course, again, non-trivial um, task of, of getting that parameter also in an optimal way. And in realistic application scenarios, um, as I said, there are no predefined way in order to choose Sigma and we just have to test it. And yeah, with this summary, I would like to thank you for your attention. I wish you a pleasant week and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye bye.